prime time local news serving the lakeland and midwest regions good evening and thank you for joining us many alberta colleges are supporting students through covid 19 by offer virtual learning to make sure that the students get their education i had a chance to find out on how lakeland has been providing these opportunities for their students to stay educated all right, I'm very pleased to be joined with Mike Crow from Lakeland College, Vice President of Academic and Research. So Mike, thanks for joining me. Yes, great to be with you today, thank you. So let's talk about some of the programs that you know Lakeland has had to adapt for students at home, because I know COVID-19, they have obviously aren't allowed back at campuses, and I know other Alberta colleges are following suit at this as well. What is Lakeland doing to help keep those students educated during the pandemic? Yeah, it's been a huge undertaking for the college. So yeah, March 15th is when we received uh, the health order from Alberta Health Services that prohibited uh, in-person on-campus uh, course delivery. So that was a Sunday evening. Uh, so by Monday morning, we had suspended all of our classes and programs uh, and, then, and then made the transition to online delivery. And uh, within, within two or three days, we had all of our programs up in an online format. So we've had to be really creative with how students can complete their program requirements, especially when it comes to the hands-on learning that Lakeland College is known for. And so uh, we worked really well with students to make sure that they have access to the, the types of learning experiences that they need to meet all of their learning outcomes. And I think we were fortunate that the transition happened late in the academic year. We really only had about four or five weeks of classes left. In most cases, most of the labs and hands-on activities uh, had mostly been completed. And so that made our transition a little bit easier. Uh, but we, you know, we were able to end the semester. Uh, the students were really great to work with us and figure out a way to make sure that they met all of the program requirements. And I think it's been a, a big success story for the college. Now, you mentioned the students' uh, responses and whatnot. Um, I guess, can you go a little bit more in depth as to, you know, how they felt and if you heard from any students about, you know, the excitement or I guess even the worry too with, you know, having to switch their certain programs that mostly are hands-on to doing it, you know, virtually? Yep, uh, you're right. We, we've heard, we heard a bit of both, to be honest. Uh, you know, there were a lot of students that I think appreciated kind of the, new, the change and the, and the flexibility that is associated with the distance delivery model. And, uh, and then we also heard from students that were concerned about how effective that would be. Uh, you know, students, students didn't sign up for, for an online delivery, uh, right? So it was, a, it was a big change to them. It was a bit of a curveball for them, uh, as it was for us. And, you know, our preference would be to continue to deliver in person and on campus as well. Uh, but, you know, the students were great in making that adjustment. And, uh, you know, I think most of the feedback that we've heard has been extremely positive. I think the college made a significant effort to make sure that students were well supported. Uh, the instructors that we have were excellent at making sure that the students' needs were met. And I, I think in the end, uh, it turned out to be a real success for the students as well. Now, one program that you guys offer that kind of strikes me a little bit is because is your your human services program. I know a lot of students had practicums. How did that go about for the students that had to be on those practicums? Yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. It uh, when we first received the health order, uh, our interpretation was that in person practicum placements were were also going to be prohibited, and so initially our messaging to uh, students who have practicum requirements, as well as to our host agencies that we work with in industry, uh, was that we would have to postpone those practicums until the restrictions were were loosened. Uh, fortunately, though, over the over the last couple of weeks, we've had some great clarification from Alberta Health Services directly, uh, which has indicated that as long as the host organizations are following proper safety protocols, our students are allowed to participate in practicum placements. And so, uh, so that was welcome news from our perspective, that practicum placements are an important component of many of the programs that we deliver. And so we feel very fortunate to be able to continue to offer those to learners uh, so that they can complete their program requirements. So, so it, you know, it's business as usual as far as practicum placements are concerned, as long as students and the host organizations are following all of the health and safety guidelines. 
that's been our primary concern from the outset, has been ensuring that our students and our faculty and staff and the community partners that we work with are healthy and safe and well. And I think as long as we're meeting uh, those requirements, there's quite a bit that we can do to still deliver our programming. Well, Mike, I really appreciate your time sharing all that information on how Lakeland College has been adapting. I know they've been, like every other school in the country, you know, finding new ways to make sure their students are staying educated. So thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you very much. Furniture Set and Design, supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. Well, as the days get warmer, we're going to start to see more motorcycles out on the road. Jace Mackey spoke with the president of the Alberta Motorcycle Safety Awareness Society to get some motorcycle safety tips. It's Motorcycle Safety Month, and I'm here with uh, Leanne Langlois from the Alberta Motorcycle Safety Society, and we're going to be talking a little bit about their launch that they just happened. So, Leanne, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. And so I understand that you guys, over the weekend, launched your safety campaign this year, but things were a little different than they were before. Yeah, usually it's a live event, and this year we had planned to do our fifth annual in both our major cities in Alberta with Calgary and Edmonton. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we had to cancel our live events due to restrictions on gatherings, and we launched the campaign through a virtual event that was released on our social media and YouTube channel on Sunday. That's awesome, and I took a look at it. It went really well. It was really cool. Uh, I just wanted to start off by maybe asking some, what are some of the best safety tips for uh, motorcyclists when they're out on the road? What are some things they should keep in mind? Well, for riding this time of the year, it's really cool in the morning, so make sure that you're taking it easy because pavement is cold and your tires will react differently. Um, of course, there's still lots of gravel out there. Road maintenance has started up, so potholes, be aware of those. Um, understand drivers don't really realize we're back on the road. And of course, the most important is to wear all your gear all the time and obey the rules of the road. And when it comes to drivers in the car, what kind of things should we be doing to keep an eye out for motorcyclists to help everything be safe? Well, the best thing that you can do as a driver um, to share the road properly is to actually look for us. Uh, last year, we had four fatals that were as a result of a left turning vehicle in front of the path of a motorcycle. So coming up on those intersections and watching your lane changes, just really making sure you see us and also give us space. And, uh, and we'll try and reciprocate that and just everybody share the road properly. And when it comes to the safety aspect, what's the difference between driving in the city compared to driving out on a highway or in a more rural area? Well, in the city, you have obviously lots more traffic congestion. And with that, you're going to have probably a higher risk of having that fender bender happening, rear ending, things like that. Out on the highway, your risks are a little bit different as a rider. Of course, there's still issues at some intersections because some of those fatals last year did happen in rural areas, but wildlife becomes a factor. And whereas we as humans have the ability to control what we do, animals don't. They just do what they're going to do. So we need to have a head on a swivel and make sure we're watching our environment. Yeah, that's some really good tips there. Um, what for people, uh, maybe uh, uh, I understand that COVID-19 kind of poses some different uh, health risks for, uh, when it comes to driving a motorcycle. What uh, kind of things should drivers keep their eyes open for? So, uh, well, with COVID-19, obviously for drivers, it would be if you come across a collision, I would call 911 and have paramedics uh, arrive and deal with that um, instead of, you know, taking that chance or that risk unless you have to and have the ability to do so for riders though what we need to be aware of is that social distancing rule whether it is uh, whether our restrictions are loosening up or not the social distancing order physical distancing order is still in play and what that means is we need to be that six meters apart or six feet apart from each other while we're off our bikes and passengers on motorcycles have to be from the same address or that could be a big fine. Okay, that's interesting. And then uh, when it comes to your guys' message, what's the biggest message that you guys have throughout this campaign to everyone in the public? 
this year it is a big um, gift space, whether that's because of physical distancing orders in place or just on the road regardless. This year we want people to focus on making sure we're giving each other the room. Um, our hashtag has been Think Bike for a few years now. That's a European concept that we brought over here to Canada into Alberta. And Think Bike just means just always thinking of who's out there on the road, uh, whether you're a driver or a rider, we all have our responsibilities. So we want everyone to Think Bike. And if someone wants some more information about your campaign or you guys in general, how can they find that? Uh, the best way is through our website. It is ab-amss.org. And from there, there's a link to our launch, a link to COVID-19 rules, and hot buttons for all of our social media to connect. Awesome. Thanks for taking some time to talk with us today, Leanne. Thanks for having us. After being, after being forced to cancel their races this summer, the Lloydminster runners are moving their competitions virtually. Eric Bay has more. I'm joined today by Mackenzie Brown of the Lloydminster Runners. Mackenzie, thank you for taking the time with me today. And now you guys have actually set up a virtual competition here this summer. So just tell me about that. It kind of started, uh, we, we had two races planned for this summer, uh, the Titanium Half Marathon and one called Surf to Sore Legs out at Mount Joy. And with all the health restrictions, um, not even restrictions, recommendations, it's just not possible. All the races are being canceled. Uh, and then we heard from a lot of our community, the, the Lloydminster runners kind of reached out and said, this is a tough year, everyone's struggling. Um, so we put our heads together, we joined with a couple local businesses, uh, Peer Revival and Stingray, and decided we need to come up with something for everybody. And because of the situation everyone's in, we needed to be free. So the only thing we could really come up with was a virtual race. Uh, it's called Run Revival, presented by Stingray. And what it is, it's a, it's multiple distances, so it's a two kilometer, a five kilometer, a 10 kilometer, or a half marathon. It's your choice, uh, and it's virtual. So what that, does, what that means is you basically run any course you want uh, during a time window. Our time window is June 26th to 28th, so you've got to start and finish your run during those times, and you need to track it with some type of GPS app. Uh, any smartphone will work. We have recommendations on our website, and you go out there, you, you do your best, you record it, then you send us your results and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, put you on the, we'll put you on the finishers list and see how you do. And now obviously a lot of people have had to adapt and this is a great example of it, but you guys are also gonna be doing some donating with this, so just tell me about that. So like I said, uh, our, our runners wanted, just told us everything's difficult with the economy. So it is free, but we do have some options in there. So. The, the big option we have uh, is on our registration form, you can donate to the Salvation Army Food Bank. We decided we wanted to do everything local this year. Uh, um, so we, that's the big one. We, if, if you have the funds, you can donate to them and we're gonna make that donation on your behalf right to them. We also have another, some other paid options to support local business. So for people that are wanting a race shirt, uh, like a, a t-shirt a, a or, or a finisher's medal, we have paid options on the registration and you can select those and it's all, everything's being sourced locally and produced by local businesses right here in Lloydminster. And now tons of people have talked. It's obviously very important right now to be keeping active and you guys are doing that and also making it competitive. So I guess, how does that competition kind of help with this whole thing? You know, Lloydminster Runners has always been about two things, fitness, uh, well, three, fitness, community, and wellness. Um, like if you've seen any of our Couch to 5K videos, I really talk about running is a mental health thing for, for a lot of people. And in this time, particularly where we're isolated, we don't really have each other. It's, uh, it's kind of more important than ever. Uh, so we encourage people to still get out there. Uh, it, it, it really helps. Um, and, but to do it physically distanced, <laughs> we still have lots of people doing group runs, but you know, they're, they're three meters apart running now. It's not quite the same, but it, it's better than nothing. And, you know, we encourage you if you are going for a run, the parks are packed. Uh, run on the grass if you need to. Stay far away from people. Uh, it's for everybody's health and safety. That's a good plan, good advice. And now if people do want to join in on this run, how can they do so? You know, the, the best way, you can register right on our website. So LloydminsterRunners.com. 
there's other ways to kind of keep in touch with us though and see what's going on. And the big ones are Facebook page, Lloydminster Runners. And there you're gonna find some other things too. We have a public group where anybody can post. And uh, really popular right now is our monthly challenge group. So it's, uh, it's a closed Facebook group that you can request access, anybody can join. And the, the challenge this month is four 20 minute runs a month and you're entered to win the prize. We have prizes primarily provided by the club, uh, but we also have a couple businesses sponsoring prizes this, this month. So join in, it's lots of fun and it's a good way to kind of encourage you to get going when you don't want to. All right, well, we wish you the best on this competition and thank you so much for taking the time today. Well, right out of the eight, the Lloydminster Bobcats have signed a number of players, and our Evan Kenny chatted with head coach and general manager Nigel Dubé to break down the future of the Bobcats. Joining me today is Lloydminster Bobcats head coach and GM Nigel Dubé. Nigel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, Nigel, you guys have started off the offseason pretty active, especially when it comes to prospects uh, and signing a handful already. Uh, the first one to be announced was Ethan Acoin, the Calgary product, led the Alberta Major Hockey League in goal scoring this season. Uh, what can we expect from him, uh, from, you know, his, uh, him in a Bobcats uniform? Well, for, for him, I think it was one of those things like he led all of Alberta and, and goal scored. And, um, you know, we, we broke it down. And a big part of his game was that uh, it came against the tough teams in the league. Um, our, our guys do a great job of breaking down the stats of, um, you know, each of our recruits. And with him, we saw his upside in goal scoring. And it was no secret that, uh, you know, we needed to find ways this off season to find uh, guys that could score some more goals and, and also – uh, I thought we had a, you know, we have a good amount of guys here that can uh, get guys the puck. It's just a matter of the shooter, and, and that's something that Ethan can do. He can shoot the puck, he can pick corners, and um, you know we're looking forward to that. And him. And uh, Ethan, Ethan Acoin will be joining his cousin Cameron Acoin, who's already on the team. Did do you think that helped you guys uh, in securing this prospect? Well, it was. We we leaned on Cam. Um, it's one of those that you know I've said it before where. Um, you know, there's probably days that Cam is my, you know, he, he's not a, a big fan of me and there's days that he probably likes me as a coach, but, um, you know, we, we look at our players to recruit uh, our, our future players and, and that's how you get a, an honest read of, of what's going on, um, you know, when, when they're in the dress room to the community to all that. So um, Cam played a big factor into that and, and I think that's exciting and, um, you know, we, we have other guys here too that we get uh, to call our recruits and, and they touch base with them to, to get that familiarity. Uh, from a player perspective, and it goes a long way. Next up in your team signings was hometown boy Matthew Swanson, a 2003-born player who got 28 points last season in Midget AAA. What are you guys getting from him? Well, Swanee's a quiet personality, and, and the good part about Swanee, you know, this process started a year ago with him where we met with uh, him and his family, and, and they came to camp, and then into fall camp, played preseason, went back to uh, the 18s, and and then uh, came up throughout the year whenever it worked with the school schedule and practice with us. So he saw inside our dressing room, he saw, you know, the strides that we made as an organization. And uh, he's another one that he's, he's a quiet personality, but he plays big. Um, and then he's, he's Chris Weeb. Uh, when I, I told Weber that we signed him, he was the one that said uh, he's got the silky mitts, right? So, um, you know, it's one of those that he can create plays. Uh, he's got the offensive upside to him again that we're looking for. Um, and he also is believing in the process here and, and went through it. So um, we're excited to have him. Uh, we're excited to have his family. Uh, obviously, being in Lloydminster all the time, watching Matthew, uh, you know, they know what goes on here. And, and we're excited for them to uh, be a part of the, the Big Cats group. As well, Swanson also adds a bigger body for your team, and especially playing in that tough, uh, big North division. That'll totally uh, help you guys out. Uh, another prospect you guys signed from a little bit of a – an ordinary place was uh, um, Aiden Flynn out of Nashville, already committed to the University of Alabama, Huntsville. Uh, this is an interesting prospect. What are you guys getting from him? Well, it's, uh, it's an interesting hockey area, and, and uh, it all kind of started five years ago. I, I went out that way um, to work some U.S. development stuff when I was coaching down in, in the U.S., and um, that's kind of where I... I I saw the original footprint of, of what they were trying to do there with their hockey programs. And um, before it came to National Predators, there was a TPH group, and it's a full-on developmental group that they work around the clock. And 
guys are on the ice all the time. So it's, it's pretty much set up in a, a junior way. Uh, I'd worked with his coach really close, and, and Aiden was a player um, that has his commitment already looked after, and, and now he's coming in here, and he, he doesn't have to worry about that. He just worries about getting better every day, um, being a great teammate that, that helps his, uh, you know, his teammates move on to the next level as well. And um, he actually, with the, him and his family, were up here and, and uh, took in a, an AJ game and, and saw what it's all about too throughout the season. So um, I think it's big parts there and, and obviously a, a big signing and, and having having his commitment already as well. Well, Nigel, I always appreciate you taking the time and uh, sitting down and talking with us. Anytime, Evan, anytime. Today I'm joined here with Don Hames of Don Interior and Design and today we're going to be talking about something a little bit differently than interior design and that's masks. Now Don, you've been making masks, sewing masks for people. Tell me a little bit about how you started and why you decided to start making them. Sure. Um, when this um, pandemic first started, I thought that um, it would be really um, a wise thing to um, to make face masks and to for people to be able to wear them to stop the spread. However, um, the chief medical officer um, of Canada said uh, not to wear masks. So I didn't start until um, later when she announced that um, that we could start. And I just think it's really great because um, we can help protect our community um, by wearing masks. Yeah, exactly. It may not stop you from getting it but it'll definitely help spread uh, stop the spread of your germs and your saliva and all that kind of stuff so it's perfect tell me a little bit uh, about the donation that you made to the interval home i had read a post on facebook saying that you had donated some masks to them yeah sure well i um we donated um a face masks for the staff and the residents there and basically i donated the fabric and all the supplies and this uh, lovely lady named Rose Vladimir did the sewing and she uh, sewed up 40 masks. So that's pretty amazing on, on her. And you're also um, working towards getting some for the men's shelter as well, right? Uh, right, yeah, we've already done that. And it's the same thing. Um, Don Interiors uh, donated all the supplies and this same lovely lady, Rose Vladimir, sewed them all up. <laughs> That sounds oh, absolutely amazing. Um, now, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, no longer being able to find elastic, but you have found a substitute for it. Do you want to kind of share what that is and how uh, how to use it? Okay, sure. Like, I um, just want to, I don't know if I can show you this here. Um, oops, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> so basically, I've taken um, a nylon and I, I don't know if you can see that right there. And um, I, I cut it across and then about one inch wide and then pull it and it turns into a nylon elastic. And the benefit is, um, first of all, it's available um, because you can't, um, it's very difficult to get elastic. And uh, the second thing, it's really soft on your ears. So one of the biggest complaints of wearing fast face masks, especially if you wear them for extended period of time is that they, they start to bother and hurt your ears. So this kind of solves that problem. The ones that we're making also, we have, um, it's like an envelope back um, at the back of the face mask and you can insert a filter, like um, a piece of paper towel that's cut to fit. And that just gives you that extra uh, layer of protection if you have to go um, someplace like a drugstore where it might be a little more risky, to, you know, cause there's often people there that need um, medications for being sick or they're picking up medications for someone that's sick. And so where can people find the masks and purchase them and all that kind of stuff? Well, we're doing curbside pickup. We're, we're legislated shut by the government right now, but we can do curbside uh, pickup. So we're doing that Tuesdays and Fridays from 11 to five. And people can uh, uh, message our Facebook page um, or email us to order masks and uh, we'll sew them up for whoever wants them. But for anybody that wants to make their own, I'll just tell you that um, um, the size that I cut is uh, six by nine inches. And you can do that for the front and the back. Or if you want to do the filter option, then cut two pieces of lining that are four and a half by nine for the back. And we put a little bit of uh, pipe cleaner in at the nose bridge. 
so that it will fit better and tighter in that area. And that piece is cut four inches. That sounds awesome. And now, uh, before we wrap up, tell me, how is your, how has Dawn Interiors business, how has that been since the pandemic? How have you been um, working around all the guidelines? Well, you know, it, the, the basic guideline has just been that we have to be closed. We're, um, um, you know, still continuing to, if we handle money, we're not scared to handle money. We just wash our hands. I just wash my hands or, or use Lysol a wipe. Um, it's, I guess, like any business that's legislated shut, you don't have uh, very much income and you still have bills coming in. And so that's um, definitely a, a challenge to say the least. Well, uh, Dawn, thank you so much for uh, taking time out to talk to me and hopefully Absolutely. people get on with the masks and uh, it's great what you're doing, uh, getting people uh, staying safe and helping people stay safe as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Abby, for um, inviting me to, to chat with you. Of course. I'm joined here with Charlene Tozak, and she's a seasonal and garden center manager at Home Hardware here in Lloydminster. And now with Mother's Day coming up, you guys are offering a few things around the store, and that's starting with your greenhouse. Yes, we are really excited to um, be considered an essential service for our greenhouse. So we do have our green, greenhouse and garden center open now for the season. Uh, it has changed our hours slightly, though, because of the situations happening. So we are now considered 8.30 until 5 p.m. to be our store hours. And because we're trying to limit the traffic coming through the garden center, we have also decided to open for the next four Sundays. And on those Sundays, we will be operating from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m. And for Mother's Day, you guys also have some certain special plants and flowers out there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we did receive in some beautiful hydrangeas. They're pink hydrangeas that you can actually see uh, pictures of through our Facebook page. Um, we do have an assortment of indoor plants and a huge variety of succulents as well. Uh, so quite a bit of that you can actually see on our online store at curated.hhloyd.com. There will be a ton of pictures of the flowers and of some of the different offerings we have on that page. And now with your guys' online store, you also have, you know, other products on there that people might consider for Mother's Day. So can you give some um, other information about some of those products? Yeah, a few of those products would be uh, Yeti is a very pop popular product anyways, and we have our whole line of Yeti available on Curated. We do have some lotions specifically for Mother's Day. It's uh, a Dear Mom brand of bath bombs and body lotions. And then there are some build-your-own gift boxes, too, that is available. Um, we can include things like our Timber Cafe jams and jellies, dish cloths, um, chocolates, anything that you would really wish for, we can get that included in a gift box and wrapped up nicely for you. And if someone was coming in to get one of these gift boxes or just looking at other products, would they just be able to come into the store or would they order them online first for pickup or how, how does it really work? We do have a couple of options. Yes, our store is available for uh, customers to come in. Uh, our garden center is as well and so we have set up some specific protocols just to make it safe. Um, kind of a one-way traffic uh, is set up throughout the aisles of both the garden center and of the store. We also have hand sanitizing stations so people are welcome to uh, sanitize. And then in each of the greenhouses, we have a limited capacity of people to go into the greenhouses. So that helps limit the amount of uh, social contact and it gives a bit of that distancing. Uh, we also offer on, uh, we offer our 
curbside pickup as an option. So if customers want to go onto that curated website and order products, we can bring it out to you via curbside. We do also have the, uh, the debit machines. We have our portable as well. So we can bring them out to your vehicle so that you can pay via debit or credit card. And once you come into our parking lot, you basically park in one of the designated curbside pickup stalls and give us a phone call and then we would bring your order out to you. That sounds great. And if someone was looking to contact you guys, where can they go? You can definitely find that at Home Hardware Voidminster. You can find it on our Facebook page as well. We would have all of our contact information. Um, and, and that would be the best places to look for that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks.